The Origins of Proto-Semites Where is the best place of the origins for Proto-Semites? We covered the many origins of Proto-Semites, mainly the Horn of Africa, Eastern Sahara, North Africa, and the Levant with the Natufians. The Semitic family is a member of the larger Afro-Asiatic family, all of whose other five or more branches have their origin in North Africa or the Maghreb. Largely for this reason, the ancestors of Proto-Semitic speakers were originally believed by some to have first arrived in the Middle East from North Africa, possibly as part of the operation of the Saharan pump around the late Neolithic. This was in red. In green, it says, Dankoff sees Semitic originating between the Nile Delta and Canaan as the northernmost branch of Afro-Asiatic. In blue, it reads, Bench even wonders whether the highly divergent Greg languages indicate an origin in Ethiopia, with the rest of Ethiopic Semitic a later back migration. And in yellow it reads, according to Christy G. Turner II, there is archaeological and physical anthropological reason for a relationship between the modern Semitic speaking populations of the Levant and the Natufian culture. So as you can see on the image to the left, or to the right, excuse me, the various places where Afro-Asiatic and where Semitic could have originated from, and as we see from the readings that we just read, in red, there's a North African origin. In green, there is a, now between the Nile Delta and Canaan origin, and in blue, a Ethiopian or Horn of Africa origin, and in yellow, a Levantine Natufian origin. But from an academic point of view, which one is the best? This is what we're going to find out today using an old earth model. Remember what the old earth perspective is. Old earth creationism, also known as OEC, is a form of creationism which includes day-age creationism, gap creationism, and, and progressive creationism. Broadly speaking, OEC, Old Earth Creationism, occupies a middle ground between Young Earth Creationism, YEC, and Theistic Evolution, TE. Now, if you want to learn more about Old Earth Creationism, I actually have a video that deals with Old Earth Creationism and even Young Earth Creationism. But if you want a more deeper understanding of what it's what it means, I have a playlist that deals with a very in-depth understanding of Old Earth creationism from various uh, academics in the Abrahamic faith. But check these videos out for a more deeper in-depth understanding. Again, this is in my playlist, Old Earth creationism, as it is titled, and this will help you understand a little bit more about it. So we know that Semites are Afro-Asiatic people. We also know most Afro-Asiatics are haplogroup E. As we said before, Afro-Asiatic of or relating to or being a family of languages widely distributed over Southwestern Asia and Africa, including Semitic and Semitic of relating to or consisting a, a subfamily of the Afro-Asiatic language family that includes Hebrew. And of course, the Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the way to Shem, they are a Semitic people. And we know according to uh, this journal from Human Journal of Human Genetics, this paper says the Proto-Afro-Asiatic group carrying the E-P2 mutation may have appeared at, some, at this point in time and subsequently gave rise to the different major population groups 
including current speakers of the Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralist populations. This was from Y chromosome E haplogroups, their distribution and implication to the origin of Afro-Asiatic languages and pastoralism. Therefore, this study will focus on haplogroup E as the marker of Semitic people. Therefore, our goal is to establish why haplogroup E is proto-Semitic. This is important because why DNA haplogroups are passed down from father to son. The genealogy of Israel is also passed down from father to son, just like a haplogroup would. As we know in Genesis chapter 11, this is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. After he begot Arphaxad, Shem lived 500 years and begot sons and daughters. And then from Genesis chapter 11, 10 through 26, it reads, Arphaxad, Shelah, Eber, Heleg, Ru, Serg, Nahor. Now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham. This is a complete genealogy of male of a male lineage going back to Abraham to Shem. And this fits exactly with a haplogroup. Paternal haplogroups. A paternal haplogroup relates to your Y chromosome. And since that is the sex determining chromosome for men, it is passed down from father to son. As women don't have a Y chromosome, they will not have a paternal haplogroup by default. However, if the, however, they are able to find out what their paternal haplogroup is if a male relative from the father's side, ideally a brother, father, uncle, or grandfather, is also tested. But the main thing you need to keep in mind is this. The paternal haplogroup relates to your Y chromosome. And since that is the sex determining chromosome for men it is passed down from father to son just like the genealogy going from Shem all the way down to Abraham from Abraham all the way down to Isaac a perfect male line lineage furthermore our goal is to figure out the best likely genotype of proto-Semites, as well as the point of origin from whence they originated. And again, this is from an old earth perspective. With all that being said, let's begin. The origins of haplogroup D, E. D and E, which both descend from D, E, Yap, the first mutation that split into the E branch that perhaps returned to Africa. Down below is the source. Next source. Yap positive mutation occurred outside Africa forming the DE clade and this dispersed on to East Asia becoming D. While the second DE branch returned to East Africa there becoming E. The source is at, at the top. Next source. Haplogroup E is one of the two branches of the Mega DE. It originated approximately 50,000 years ago. Scientists believe that it either rose in Africa or represents a back migration. The source for that is down below. And this is from 23 Me, and it says, it's possible that men carrying the DE haplogroup journeyed from Africa across the Red Sea and into the Arabian Peninsula. But it is also possible that haplogroup DE originated within the Arabian Peninsula itself and later spread back to Africa. Uh, this is a source. The source is down below. It says, Regions near but external, external to northeast Africa, like the Levant or the southern Arabian Peninsula, could have served as an impetus for the early diver, di, diversification 
of non-African-owned paternal haplogroup varieties like Y-chromosome DE Yap star. This model would only would, this model would imply that both CF-P143 and the DE-YAP evolved nearby but outside Africa. One DE-YAP star ancestor would have spread to Asia and evolved to haplogroup D, while another DE-YAP star returned to Northeast Africa and evolved into haplogroup E. Down below is the source. This one reads, but the fact that haplogroup E is closely linked with haplogroup D, which is not found in Africa, leaves open the possibility that E first arose in the Near or Middle East and was subsequently carried into Africa by a back migration. E1b1b1 probably evolved either in Northeast Africa or the Near East and then expanded to the West, both North and South of the Mediterranean Sea. The source is down below. So basically, all these sources are saying that haplogroup DE would have split in the Middle East. The likely location could be Mesopotamia. Here are more sources dealing with the haplogroup DE Yap originating in the Middle East. So it reads, consistent with previous proposals, a parsimonious interpretation of the phylogeny, phylogeny is that the prominent African haplogroup E arose outside the continent. This model of geographic segregation within the CT clade represents just one continental haplogroup exchange, E to Africa, rather than 3, D, C, and F out of Africa. Furthermore, the time of this plentitive return to Africa between the emergence of E and its differentiation within Africa by 58 years, 58,000 years ago is consistent with proposals based on non-wide data of abundant gene flow between Africa and nearby regions of Asia 50 through 80,000 years ago. Here's a source, carriers of mitochondrial DNA, micro haplogroup L3, basal lineages migrated back to Africa from Asia around 70,000 years ago. And it reads, the split of the Y chromosome composites D, E, haplogroup is very similar to the age of mitochondrial L3 and and Eurasian origin and back migration to Africa has been proposed for the African Y chromosome haplogroup E. This correlation rather seems to be the result of a joint and global replacement of the old autochthonous male and female African lineages by the new Eurasian incomers. There's another source dealing with DE. It says, and this is from use of Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA population structure in tracing human migrations. And it says, such an ancestral node would imply that DE is a subset of Eurasian variation and therefore the African Yap chromosomes could be considered as due to a back migration from Asia. Here's another source dealing with it. Curiously, uh, curiously, ancestral E star lineages have been detected in the Arabian Peninsula and the Levant. Here's another source Saudi Arabian Y chromosome diversity and its relationship with nearby lineages. So it reads. Geographical distribution of these 
sub-Saharan African lineages in the Arabian Peninsula seem to indicate a prehistoric entrance of a noticeable portion of these lineages that participated in the building of the primitive Arabian population. The presence of two underived E-M96 Saudi lineages raises interesting question, questions related to the micro half group de yap phylogeography. Regions near but external to Northeast Africa, like the Levant or the Southern Arabian Peninsula, could have served as an impetus for the early diversification of non-African unpaternal haplogroup varieties like Y chromosome DE Yap star. This model would imply that both CF-P143 and the DE Yap evolved nearby but outside Africa. One DE Yap star ancestor would have spread to Asia and evolved into haplogroup D, while another DE Yap star returned to Northeast Africa and evolved into haplogroup E. Here's another source dealing with haplogroup D and E called Yap Insertion Signature in South Asia. So it says, in contrast, Hammer at 1997 and 1998 paper and at Tilded and Hammer at 1997 hypothesized an alternative Asian origin. The lineage that acquired the Yap insertion polymorphism is divided into two subclusters, haplogroup E found today in Africa and the Mediterranean and haplogroup D found in Japan and Southeast Asia. Underhill in 2001 paper. Y chromosome data on Indian populations reveal that the paternal lineage of present-day populations are predominantly derived from the original Indian gene pool, rather than a recent influx. Here is another study. How the group D chromosomes have not been found anywhere outside of Asia, the likely place of origin of this haplogroup. D lineages are most commonly found in Central Asia, Tibet, and in Japan, and are also present at low frequencies in Southeast Asia and among Andaman Islanders. So here is a map dealing with haplogroup D, as they said, and is seen mostly in Tibet, Japan, and Southeast Asia. Haplogroup E is now is now defined by 18 mutations. There are a total of 83 polymorphic sites that mark lineages within this clade, compared with a total of 30 internal mutations in 2002. This, and this makes haplogroup E by far the most mutational, the diverse of all major Y chromosome clades. These polymorphisms define 56, 56 distinct haplogroups, which can be found at high frequencies in Africa, at moderate frequencies in the Middle East and Southern Europe, and with occasional occurrences in Central and South Asia. The origins of haplogroup DE, according to many geneticists, seems to have been in West Asia, also known as the Middle East. Although some say it could have emerged in Africa, there seems to be an overwhelming consensus that haplogroup DE is Middle Eastern or West Asian in origin. With that being said, who is the earliest descendants of haplogroup E? Mm -hmm.